Hello there, lads and ladies. <coughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Rugby 2022 <laughs> Rugby World Cup. Sorry, <laughs> the hair in my mouth. Uh, today we're here to watch England completely thrash Australia. And I say that because they are. By 34 points to 5, Australia only managed to get the um, first try right on the cusp of the end of the first half. Uh, they've had a yellow as well, so they've kind of calmed down since the first few games against like Wales and Scotland and all that. No more reds and all that, thankfully. But this will probably be the run, the end of the run for Australia, I believe. Out of most countries, I think Australia are probably the most equal to us when it comes to sports. Well, in certain sports. Like, um... Like with the recent Ella Mobs Cup trophy being renamed from, uh, you know, the Cooks Cup. It's now known as the Ella Mobs Cup, named after the uh, two rugby players uh, from England and Australia. Ella, of course, being the Hall of Famer rugby goer, who's still alive today, thankfully. And um, then there's Edgar, who uh, was a... English rugby player who, <coughs> excuse me, took part at Passchendaele, unfortunately losing his life in a war, basically, at Passchendaele in the First World War, so. World lost a very great man and a great rugby player, so I found it quite sweet, like it was quite nice that they actually renamed it the Ellen Mobs Cup. An awful lot of people will be like, oh, well, why'd you change it? Like, why, why are you changing history? It was fine being the Cook's Cup and all that stuff. You know, like Captain Cook, like, you know, he founded, like, Australia and all that crap. And he founded the Cook Islands. And I'm like, yeah, so? I mean, sometimes things have to change, really, for the better. And I kind of like that it was really named after one of the two most well-known, like, players at least from their own country basically because Edgar was hailed as a hero for you know giving his life for his country at Passchendaele whilst Ella was known as a Hall of Fame famous Australian rugby player really so what I want to do with the Ella Mobs Cup I want to get like a picture of it hopefully do the top half of it in black and grey and then get the bottom part of it in like a rustic brown wooden type look and have it done on my leg because I've got the Quidditch style picture on the front of my leg and I kind of want to have the Alamobs cup around the side and then later on I want to add the three lions from uh, the cricket emblem you know for our cricket team basically for the three lions. Australia got charged down there, they stay in possession though, eight minutes left. Sorry if I went on a tangent, it's just, I like to admit that Australia are probably the most tenacious when it comes to our sports basically, and I think they're probably, uh, we're probably their most hated enemies really, calling us poms and all that crap. I've never agreed with, you know, them calling us poms and all that stuff, but that's fine. Some people get called convicts. <laughs> you know, like, you get a course of pom, they call you a convict. Which is really funny as well because I've got cousins who live in Australia and one of my cousins is Australian so it's kind of like, you know, it's like a friendly type of rivalry we've got going on really. <coughs> Sorry if I'm coughing again, I'm still a bit sick. It's a bloody damn infection in my arm. Still hasn't left me. I've got today and then tomorrow of some antibiotics, so hopefully this should start to clear up by tomorrow, hopefully, because it doesn't feel like it's leaving soon, but it's working. Like, I've noticed that my arm is no longer hurting anymore, so... Like, I can move my arm, but there's still some resistance. Which is very troubling, really. That's why I took the antibiotics. But I'll talk more about that later on. Now you're just here to enjoy the work. <coughs> it's England's line out. We're doing our casual line out scrum. It's a rolling ball. 
And we've knocked it on. That's England's bread and butter, and they've just gone and made it look like a farce. Come on now, girls. The line out rolling more is our baby. We don't want to go and start dropping it now. Thankfully, they've got like 34 points in front, you know. So, that gives us an opportunity for semi finals live next Saturday. Ah, okay. So, both of them are live. I was checking next week for the recording of uh, the semi finals. I only saw one. So I'm going to have to check whether or not if it's taped in the same recording or if they've just gone and like utterly not recorded it because I ain't missing a single semi-final. Especially when it's England against France or New Zealand. I mean, as much as... I'd like to believe that USA could probably make it to the semis, or Canada will make it to the semis. It's just whether or not if Canada can go to the finals again. I can't. I can't remember who they beat back in 2014. Might have been the All Blacks. I'm not so sure. I'm gonna have to check that out. But it was still impressive back then. So they could still do it. But with how good France and the All Blacks, sorry, not the All Blacks, no, the Black Ferns have been recently. I'm gonna be, it's gonna be very tough for a Canada. It's gonna be very tough, I think. Hell, part of me just wants to see USA kind of like fight back against Canada, just because they're the underdogs amongst the two, you know? Everyone always loves an underdog. Time's on. Scrum time for Australia. For the Wallaroos. Early push for Austria, for England, sorry. That's a penalty for Australia, but they're going to tap and go. Jesus Christ. You know when they say that you need mics for on-game fielding? You don't need that for the women. You can just hear them just fine. Just screaming their heads off. <laughs> it might be the fact that there's barely any crowd here today to see the game, so you can definitely hear them no problem without the crowd just over talking them and cheering. So, after all, everyone's just here to see uh, New Zealand, really. That's usually how it goes for home games. Now, now. Now, now, calm down. That's enough. <laughs> that's enough. That's enough. Stop it now. Stop it. Oh my god. The Australian time in opposition on their 22 is only like 29 seconds. And the territory is only 30 metres compared to England's 70. And the position is 34% compared to England's 66. Jesus. They've only had three visits into our 22 as well. Fucking hell. Poor Australia, man. They're fucking having a guard time of it. Yeah, because it's cricket that they do well in. They're current champions in the T20, whilst we're the current champions in the full day of cricket, like back in 2019 with the World Cup champions. Like, that's the first time we've ever won it, so I'm not saying we're, like, the masters of it, you know, but... You know, that was a very well-deserved World Cup against New Zealand, who showed a very tough time. You know, who showed a very tough game against us, really. We were really thankful to get that win. Whereas in Rugby League, Australia also do very well. Although that's kind of boring to watch due to the fact it's just New Zealand, Australia and England. Half the time, it's usually Australia that comes out on top. Sometimes we win, sometimes New Zealand gets the odd win of the World Cup, basically. Uh, whilst in Rugby Union, it's kind of on the nose that England is marginally better than Australia, just due to the fact that they've won more uh, meetings between the two of them, although it's very close. It's like as close as Wales is uh, win streak with us, basically. You know, because... 
England has a very tough time with Wales and Australia just because we've had so much time with each other, which makes us really close rivals due to the fact that we're just so in each other's faces all the time and we know each other's strengths and weaknesses and we've had that time to practice against one another. Which made me really happy that we won the decider against Australia in the LMOFs Cup because they won the first match by two points. It was very close. But they've earned it, that one, because after their red card, they showed great grit and determination to carry on through to the end of it. But after how Australia have kind of been doing things in the recent Bedslow Cup, you know, after the whole Nick White incident where his moustache was in danger of being slapped off of his face you know he, he did a dive basically and no one wants to see that in rugby this isn't football don't dive in football don't dive in rugby and that's another English try seven that's five points mate they still need to get the kick Calm down. This is in the far left corner as well, so if they kick it and hit it, then yeah, it's seven, but if they kick it and miss, then it's still five. But they're not celebrating too much yet, are they? They've still got work to do, and they'll focus on that semi final now. This is the thing I really don't like about English commentary. Sometimes they'll. There goes the buzzer. Okay, never mind. That was deserved. I was just—I was just gonna say they circle wank each other by saying that. Oh yeah, we're the best team in the world. Blah 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 blah. But then there's good reason to because <laughs> when he said, "Oh, that there's seven points," they're in the far left side of the corner, so you think, "Ah, oh, they might miss it." But she kicks and then gets it. So it's like, "Oh, okay. Well, okay, seven points." <laughs> you can't deny that. You know, a team is good when a team is good. You know, you've got to admit that. Oh no, I think she might have missed it. Oh no, 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 she missed it, never mind. Yeah, my argument still stands. <laughs> England 39, Australia 5. Australia were very good this year to become the, to become WTs within the Women's World Cup. It's a sign for growth basically for them. You know, Australia, when they have the time to learn and practice something, and they practice it well, they can destroy people. It's like in the Ashes, like they're still on top with the amount of wins they've got. Whilst in rugby, us versus Australia is still an ongoing like synosis of fights, basically. I think we had the longest streak of like eight wins or something like that, and that was broken when they won in the first Ellen Mobs Cup. And then the second match went England's way. And then the third match for the decider went England's way, thankfully, by four points. And I think that game ended after the buzzer went and then someone did a knock-on after the buzzer. Which means it was full time. Which didn't happen in that one game with Wales versus New Zealand, because that's why I was so all over the place about it. Because I was like, well, if you knock on after the buzzer's gone, then that's surely game. But they carried on for some reason, which is why I'm kind of like... I don't know, I feel like there's not much structure in a game that doesn't have, like, you know, like, steady rules that are being thrown about. Or maybe it's due to the fact that there are just so many penalties being thrown about that they just tend to forget, like, oh yeah, you're meant to do this at this certain time. Like, sometimes when you're doing it, like, doing the job as hard as a ref, you're throwing out penalties left, right and centre, sometimes you forget the basics of, like, oh, yes, we've got to end the game now that there's a knock-on. You know, it's the small things you forget, basically. So, you know, I'm not harping on the ref for that stuff. It just happens. People make mistakes and stuff like that. But it's just funny when they didn't stop the game right away last time. But, yeah, England versus Australia. Nice try for Australia, but not close enough. England are definitely going through to the semis. Who we will face, we'll have to find out next week or sometime within the week. I'll probably keep you guys updated because, really, it's going to be easy for us if we can go against Canada. I'm hoping we go against Canada because I really don't want us to go against France or New Zealand and get injuries. You know, we want to be nice fighting fit for the final. It'd be better just to let France and New Zealand fight each other out for that final spot and let their numbers twinkle down to just like the smallest amount, get their best players injured and stuff like that. 
it's cynical how you look at it, but that is what you do. That is what happens in rugby. You, sometimes a win can be based on the talent, the skill, the speed of their players, or their injuries. And sometimes that's usually the case for certain games, like in cricket, whenever it starts to rain. Sometimes the rain helps you win or helps you like get rid of a day of innings and stuff like that, you know? So... All right, well, with that, lads and ladies, I shall now move on to Canada versus USA. I think it's going to be a close one. I feel like USA have got something to prove, and Canada will definitely want to fight to get back to that same position where they were in in 2014 to get back to the finals. So, with that, lads and ladies, I thank you all ever so much, and I will see you in the next episode. Take care, my friends. Freaking sofa. <laughs>